And welcome back, GG Leagues fans from Twitch, YouTube, and from our Facebook page. Welcome back to another wonderful League of Legends stream here today. We're taking you down to the Eastern Division C, where we're going to be having two Giants face off. Davenport University Academy versus Morningside Esports Legends. My name is Mercenary, and joining me today is DJ, and we're already diving straight into bands here, DJ. Yeah, absolutely. Our mercenary, they're going pretty quickly here, too, as three already taken away from Davenport. See Galio, Sejuani, and Pantheon taken away. So a lot of CC there. A little surprised to see the Sejuani maybe is a specific pick, but Galio and Pantheon, two champions that have been uh, very present in both solo queue uh, and the general uh, metagame for the last couple of patches here. Pantheon mostly as an aggressive support, and Galio as that roaming mid laner. Meanwhile, on the side of Morningside, we see Echo and Swain taken away. Echo been making some waves at the World Championship. Swain getting stronger and stronger as a support. And now the Caitlyn uh, still towards the top of a lot of people's. AD Carry is taken away. And uh, Zach locked in for the first pick there, Mercenary. Yeah, Zach, a great jungle there, especially for team fights. Glad to see him there. But a Garen pick is going to be coming out from Morningside here, something we don't see very often. Great top laner in general, does a lot of damage, great bruiser as well but it looks like he's gonna be trying to combo into the jungle being a trundle here trundle despite his nerfs still his nerfs in the past has still been an absolute uh, terror on the rift with a callista also coming out as well another unusual one we haven't seen much of but callista is on her top for a lot of uh, ad carry mains right now oh and, the and there's the callista Eric well. combo so the full bot lane coming together here this one has been used by several teams, particularly in the spring split, uh, trying to use that early pressure from Callista, get her ahead, and then allow her to go crazy in team fights with the use of that Taric ultimate. So we'll see how Davenport is able to execute this one. I'm I'm excited to see it. You always love to see what AD carries can play. Callista, that champion, is extremely mechanically intensive, very hard uh, to play correctly, in my opinion, and uh, I'm excited to see uh, how they're going to run this one. I'm very excited to see as well as we get the Thresh locked down for Morningside's last pick in the first round here as we're going straight back into bands. Uh, something to find interesting, they did leave the Ash open a band, so we probably won't see her during the match. She is also one of the top AD carries right now, so I'm interested to see what Davenport does with that if they're just going to ban the Ash out outright, but it looks like they're looking for the Velkos. Well, Orn has been taken away from Davenport from the top lane, another great top laner, especially against the Garen. On yeah, the last well, band here as well. Orn in his usual place in pick and ban territory here, and yeah, trying to take some potential counters away from Garen. It is surprising to see that Garen come out with that first pick on red side. Very uh, bold statement there from Morningside saying you cannot uh, fight this because uh, they do have the full giraffe here to pick something, both a jungler and a top winner, that they think could be good into Garen. And while he is strong, uh, definitely. And Dean. Uh, quite linear with most of his abilities. Uh, definitely not as useless as he was last year after some of the changes allowing him to go Trinity Force uh, into Fan Dancer this year, but uh, is still a fairly linear champion here. We'll see what Davenport's going to try to pick up in the back half of this draft to deal with it. Definitely indeed. They did take out the Zoe and the Ash as well. So no top 80 carries right now. If they're having with this Thresh here, it's going to be very interesting what they're going to have to try to combo with that one morning side is one second left they're gonna pick out the lissandra for the mid lane another character we don't see very often great clear great cc chain we might see the aftershock as an aftershock lissandra is still pretty strong and taking it around the corners but it looks like to try to deal with the garen davenport's gonna pick up this ergot here and for their last pick is gonna be against that lissandra so ergot garen what do we expect from that one there dj um it, it can depend a lot on how the lane is played. You know, Urgot should uh, be a lot stronger than Garen in the early stages of the game. If you uh, watch Donghwap's videos at all and you uh, uh, have seen some high-level Urgot play, he can probably just pressure Garen off of the wave entirely at level 1 um, into level 2, really, before Garen can do anything with those shotgun knees being available. And so we'll see how the Urgot's played. I, I think in laning phase, it should be a struggle for Garen, but... He gets to level 6 or level even level 11 and is still pretty healthy. Uh, it can start to turn around on the Urgot. It's a little hard potentially to do damage, get through the Phantom Dancer shield with your ultimate, and uh, Garen can uh, deal, sustain away any of the poke damage you would do to try to set up your combos. So 
Uh, Urgot should have that early advantage. It, it can uh, vary in team fights later on, but it'll be uh, an interesting and unusual top matchup, not one we see all the time for sure. Definitely indeed. And rounding out the picks here is going to be that Victor and a Lucian going into the Morningside spot lane with that Thresh, common wife stealer bot lane. But looking across these two picks here, I'm interested to see what happens. There's a lot of interesting contenders and that we don't normally see. A Garen Urgot should be an interesting matchup in the top lane. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Kalista Tark definitely have the moves to out dodge the Thresh and they have the uh, extra utility to deal with Lucian damage. But DJ, what do you think we're going to see here uh, just based off these two team comps? Um, this is an interesting one, Mercenary. I, I, I actually have a, a decent amount of concerns about Morningside's team composition here in that it's really lacking in damage. Um, really only going to be, uh, you know, Garen will provide some single target, but his AoE is not going to do enough damage. Well, Sandra is a pretty single target uh, da uh, damage dealer in the mid to late game, and uh, Lucian can deal a lot of damage, but he's super short range, so it becomes very hard in the later stages of the game for Lucian to access team fights. Uh, I think that uh, problem is exaggerated against the likes of a Zack and a Victor. I think the one thing Morningside has going for them is that Kalista does want to be up close and personal in team fights. It benefits her to be getting spears into multiple members after picking up rune hands, but she's going to have the Taric with her and does have a lot of beefy people in front of her. Um, I do think they can try to get on top of this Kalista and take her down uh, before hopefully the Taric ultimate comes out, but I think if that Taric ultimate comes out, it becomes really hard for Morningside to win any sort of team fight. So they either need to stack dragons extremely quickly or avoid team fighting in the middle stage of the game altogether. And if it gets to the late stage, I think this victor just goes absolutely untouched in every single team fight. Definitely there. So mid lane's going to be a very interesting one. I don't expect a ton of interaction. A lot of poke from Victor, though. I can see that happening. Meanwhile, in bot lane, I want to see how good Morningside's Thresh is here, as we do have a lot of a uh, lot of talk actually coming from this part Seabass. Many of you know him because he was actually on stream with us recently, casting alongside with me. He promised some nutty gameplay and some, and definitely interested to see how his Thresh handles a Callista. Well, Tark might be the easier target. You really don't want to grab him with that uh, stun up. Meanwhile, in the top lane, this Garen's probably gonna have a rough time early. Uh, even into mid game, Urgot's able to get fed thanks to the help of the Zac coming up there. It's going to be pretty rough. So I'm thinking that the junglers are going to be leaving mid a lot alone this matchup. Maybe looking a lot more towards spot here. Either with Zach trying to get Callista farther ahead or Trundle trying to at least slow down Callista's damage. And maybe trying to get that Garen up ahead in the top lane. But it should be pretty interesting to see there as we are just about done with picks and bans. But just real quick, DJ, who do you think has this first match? Do you think Davenport's overall team comp has or do you think morning sides just amount of pressure they have do they think do you think they could handle that uh around late game yeah i think i have to lean toward davenport's draft uh, this time around again i mentioned i'm very worried about the damage profile on the side of morning side it will have as you mentioned the early game pressure the solution thresh um should be able to hold uh themselves uh, fairly well in this laning phase if thresh does land some good hooks they can get ahead early game either and as the scaling goes i'm looking at this victor zach and even the ergot uh when he gets to that uh machine gun level with the five points in w and i just think they deal a lot more damage and scale that but that damage better into the late game so i think there's a huge timer on morning side i think they can do it um but i think the longer this goes on uh the more davenport favorite it is well, you heard it here first, folks, and with about 10 seconds left here before the first round, spam in all the chats. Who do you think is going to win this first one? Is it going to be Davenport or Morningside? Let us know. And in just a couple minutes, we'll see you guys down on the rift.
And welcome back, GG Leagues fans, to this exciting matchup. Over on the blue side, we have, I'm pretty sure that's going to be Davenport. Over on the red side, we have Morningside. My name is Mercenary and DJ is joining me today, and uh, we are making some comments about these two team comps here. But the big one for that victor is no cleanse against Alessandra. Yeah, no, not bringing out the cleanse here, so... Uh, can stay safe from these potential ganks or the potential engage uh, from Lissandra, who's also taking Electrocute here, which uh, I would say normally not the choice you would expect or want to see in Lissandra. Um, but I'm actually uh, kind of like it in this case, Mercenary, because as I've mentioned, I do think that Morningside needs to win the early game. Do that, you need to try to pressure Victor out of lane or try to kill him. And with no cleanse on him, definitely will be available to be killed at level 6 when that ultimate is available for Lissandra. Definitely indeed. Lissandra's going to have a lot, a bit more of a fun lane to deal with without any uh, cleanse there as well. Has the Ignite to do some extra damage with Victor taking that TP. Might be looking for some extra growing potential, but definitely to get back into lane faster. Meanwhile, looking rest across the board right now. Just a quick 5-point start. Nobody doing anything uh, suspicious or dangerous. So we're just going to dive right in. I'm very interested to see what this bot lane has in store for us. Uh, namely, because I do want to see how they're going to handle with that Callista Tarek. While Tarek is a lot easier to hit, Callista has a lot of mobility and can dodge Q. So we might try to see some preemptive uh, Q shots coming out here from Seabass. Trying to get on top of that one. But also... I think top lane is going to be pretty self-explanatory. A lot of pressure from Urgot earlier on. And mid lane. Mid lane is going to be fun to see, especially around level 6. I want to see I want to see Irie try to dive in there, do some damage. And uh, without that cleanse, they have a lot of extra pressure. Yeah, absolutely, dear Mercer. And as you mentioned, I don't think we need to keep our eyes too close on to mid lane until that level 6 mark. I think it's very hard to kill both of these champions beforehand. You know, Of course, Sandra can... Uh, take the claw and actually we have a pretty early trade here so that almost turns into something there but and here's an engage in top lane Urgot's level two a lot of damage from Urgot there lands at least three shotgun knees right on top of garen who's going to have to play it safe we mid trying to get some vision on each other garen's definitely gonna be pressured back for a while until the junglers come up there trendle is looking around top side though did not go, for, went for the full clear, but has a lot faster clear here than Zach, who went, is going to be looking actually towards the bot lane here immediately. Might be trying to get in our early gank, actually. Be looking for it right now. He's charging it up. The flash is going to get burned here by Lost Boy. He's going to actually, there goes the flash right now. It's going to get shut down. First blood going straight over to Jasper, but it's not over yet. Seabass is going to get cornered by three members. A double kill going over to Jasper at only three minutes into the game. And that's a well-executed gank there by uh, Zixar on this Zach coming in uh, at the right time, getting on top of Lucian. The exhaust goes down from Tarek. They take him down. They get the double kill for the Callista. And this is disastrous for Morningside. This is a lane that you wanted to be ahead. It's a Thresh, Lucian, two champions that uh, do have most of their utility and damage and threat in the earlier stage of the game. And now this Callista, who also is so, so dangerous, uh, is uh, ahead on the clock here uh, and can really look to now take over this lane, particularly when they hit level 6 and that Taric ultimate is available. We do see Lebeau flashing away from a gank in mid lane, so good work by Tim Doom to take advantage of where, uh, knowing where Zach was uh, to make something happen on the map. And now uh, Victor without any form of escape outside of his phase rush speed boost. Indeed, and I just want to look down towards Balin at that extra vision surrounding the pet. They really don't want Zach to be coming in anytime soon. Zach is just going to go ahead and turn around for farm. But meanwhile, just, just looking at uh, Morningside's just vision pressure here, especially on the top side without Zach even coming anywhere close to the top side of the map. Trundle was able to drop some extra vision. They're able to see what's going on here. Looks like a quick ping. We'll notice that one ward before it disappears. But meanwhile, Trundle's too busy taking Zigzar's uh, chickens right now. So a lot of good play coming out here from Tim Dune. We might be seeing a lot more plays from him as currently looks like from the side of Davenport, they're being forced back in all lanes right now. Yeah, Davenport being pushed in and uh, still a little surprised that Shinny Rem allowed himself 
uh, to fall behind in levels is Garen, but Blaze Matrix obviously doing a very nice job. Uh, maybe more familiar in this matchup uh, than a lot of players are. So taking advantage of it has a decent farm lead, goes back and gets the Bramble Vest, so should be set up for success there in that top lane, uh, despite what would look to most to be a disadvantageous matchup. And uh, as you mentioned, good jungling coming out here from Tim Doom, uh, you know, taking advantage of the fact that Zixar did show for a, a successful gank in the bot lane, but and also is off a couple of camps uh, on his enemy jungler here, and a couple of those are the Zax camps as well. So we're seeing some good play out from a lot of these players right now, uh, trying to take advantage of all the situations that are cropping up on the map. Definitely indeed, but it looks like Jasper's looking around for Tim Dune, landing that Q shot there. Won't do much besides scare him off. A lot of extra vision pressure coming out here from that Callista, not too surprising. But it does look like First Drake is up, and they're immediately diving right on top of it. Gonna be first at Mountain Drake here, so no Mountain Soul, but you do have four members, two, one, Tim Dune. It's gonna be forced back here by Lebu. And it looks like this first Drake is gonna go completely uncontested over to the side of Davenport. Yep, and that's a result of the bot lane having those two kills that uh, Callista already sitting on that Vampiric Scepter to only the two Dorns Blaze on Lucian. So uh, Morningside knowing it'd be a little tricky to try to contest for that Drake, particularly against essentially the double smite in the Callista uh, Ren along with Zack Smite. So just deciding to give that one up. Uh, but that is the reward for some uh, good gank by Zixar in the early portions of the game. Yeah, Lost Boy going a little bit aggressive after Doc Engage decided to engage right there. Here comes Zizar from the back line. The, the stun is going to land. Lost Boy is looking not too shabby, but he's going to fall quickly here. Actually just barely getting out. Jasper not able to land the Q. He's able to back out with just barely any health left. Yeah, I'm actually super surprised that Lost Boy has made it out alive there. Another decent gank from Zizar. Uh, and going out with like 10 HP there, two digit uh, HP. And I'm a little surprised that Jasper didn't either flash or at least use the Martial Post to try to follow that one up. I, I'm pretty sure he could have taken one or two turret shots there to try to take down Lost Boy, but. He will somehow make it out by the skin of his teeth there, and uh, that will be a very, very nice uh, breath of fresh air for Lost Boy uh, with the way this lane has been going. Definitely indeed. He did forsake boots for an extra door. Extra healing and pressure. Meanwhile, over the side of Jasper, who just finished backing, able to pick up boots, a dagger, and a build water cutlass from that extra gold. But meanwhile, in the mid lane, Tim Dune is looking for something right here. Irie is diving in as well. The root's gonna land, the stun's gonna land. Alti is popping up around the corner, but unfortunately, Irie has to back up. This is all for Tim Dune, who's going to land the damage. Zizar is around the corner, though he does have the passive up. Currently, a chase in the jungle. No other members are waiting around the corner. Tim Dune might have this around the corner, but it's gonna get caught on the wall in the chickens. Chickens, no, how could you betray him? A little bit of a pick up some farm here, and it looks like Zizar is going to make it out alive. Yeah, and uh, that's why you take cleanse against Lissandra, kids. Uh, getting picked off there is Lebeau. Actually, does a nice job pretty much as well as he can do with that gravity field placement, getting it into a choke point. He stuns up uh, air on the uh, Lissandra there, and forces Tim Doom to wait until the gravity field goes down. He then pops the ultimate to try to deter them even further, but Tim Doom just flashes on in there to follow up on the initial CC and is able to take Lebeau down. Uh, Zizar not showing up in time and also not level 6 yet, so can't follow up on that play. Uh, and the pressure from the Lissandra level 6 ultimate comes through. We do have a Q lane here in the bot lane as Shini has gone down to the bot lane to the he can rotate so we can have some action on top of the rift, which looks like it's going to go uncontested here. Opener Davenport, well job positioning, well top job rotating as well. Does look like Garen is waiting around the corner, but he really won't stand a chance against three members. Let's get it back up. And this is going to go uncontested once again to Davenport. Yeah. Well, hold on here. We got to engage with Bottling. Ooh, a bit of an engage. She needs to be diving right in there. He is going to back it off here, but he's looking for something on top of Lost Boy. Seabass is around the corner. The damage is just too much. The Ignite will take it. Seabass is able to pick himself up a kill. Yeah, great work there by Seabass on the Thresh. Puts down an excellent ultimate. You can see he hits two walls. Hold on, we got more action in top lane. 
Yeah, Tim Dune's coming right now. The Altis Giga dropped on top of Jasper, Jasper and Doc and Gage are able to stay alive for a little bit longer here, but it does look like the Altis Giga burned on top of the Tark, who's going to dive straight back in. Here comes Zizar from the back line. Tim Dune has slain Doc and Gage as a 2v2. Once again, one kill going over here to the side of Morningside, but Zizar is just too Picking up an extra kill. Jasper's landing damage left and right. The ulti's going to get burned, but it will not be enough. More members are coming in. This is Smash Bros. Ultimate. Everyone is showing up now. The quick flash from LeBlue is going to take the kill. And LeBlue is going to back up here. Four members in the top lane. That's going to force back Gairi. And that is a wonderful matchup there. As we actually have more engage happening. These are looking for it there. It's going to be another kill going over to the side of Davenport. Wow, what a chaotic fight here, Mercenary. Is everyone jumping into the top lane here jungler tim doom coming in to try to help blaze matrix take down this duo bot lane uh and as we've seen before both in pro play and around solo queue this Callista Terrick combo is so so strong that ultimate buying so much time for the Callista to stack spears into these tanky members on the side of morningside it also gives time for zizar now level six to come all the way up and with all the time spent there, as they take each other down, uh, more members from Morningside able to show up eventually. I believe it's a 5v4-ish Shini Rim who had just died in bot side to that excellent play from Seabass, able to teleport back in and help with the end of that turret dive. It ends up coming out extremely Davenport favored there as they take down, I believe, four members uh, and the turret as well. So excellent play from all the members there of Davenport and a chaotic fight goes their way. But meanwhile, while the resets are happening here for the side of Davenport, that Drake was going to be swiftly taken by Morningside. Members were ready to try and take it, but they were just a little too late. And Infernal Drake's going to get taken over, but it now looks like it's going to be a Cloud Soul here. It's going to be very exciting to see on a lot of the members here as well. Chandel, it'd be nice to see on, especially that Ergo would be absolutely terrifying. Uh, it does look like Callista would add up to a lot easier as well. That... Just overall, I think Cloud Drake will help a lot with strong engage from multiple members as there's a little bit of trades happening here. Actually, speaking too soon, Zizar has come back into the bot lane. Seabass is full of spears. He's not looking too hot. He's going to get them pulled and just barely survive with that heal coming out from Lost Boy. Both members are able to get away. Yeah, the heal saving Seabass there as Zizar down here to affect this lane once again. You can see how strong this Callista is, even <laughs> down 20 CS. <laughs> Ooh, with, the back uh, just purely getting out there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Flash from Tarek just going wide. Ooh, we got action in the mid lane here. Lebeau doesn't have his flash up yet. Yeah, here comes Tim Doom coming up from behind. It looks like the root is not going to land. The ult is going to get dropped by Labu, but it's going to back right off going straight for Tim Doom. Some damage is going through. Bu is still on the run right now, getting caught off guard. The pillar is going to land, but Doc and Gage is here to save the day. Forcing back Tim Dune, it does not look like any kills are going to get traded over here. But we do have Shini waiting around the top side of the jungle. Yeah, good work there by LeBeau. Gets out of the second attempt on his life. Still doesn't have that flashback up, so do give him props for using that phase rush to get out. Uh, waits for Doc and Gage, and it's a little unfortunate that that uh, stun from Tarek doesn't actually land onto Tim Doom. I think if that one does land take him down and they try it again and tim doom has to flash yeah tim doom gonna burn that flash is going to get out just fine and safe but it does look like the q's gonna land right on top of jasper who's left all alone the shutdown's gonna go over to lost boy a bit of a rough match up there in a 2v1 yeah jasper just getting caught out there seabass seeing his target hits the hook and once that hook falls it is as it's named a death sentence there when you are 2v1 no help from the Taric, uh, no cc uh, no utility to help him out as Lebeau now in a little trouble, but this time he does have help. Multiple members coming through here. The Aldi's getting a pop from Doc Engage. Seabass is looking quite low and he's going to fall quickly here. But meanwhile, Lost Boy is being targeted down by Z. They're going to pop the ulti, trying to force him off, but it will not be enough. No members around the corner. This is looking for a death sentence. Quick pop over the wall. We'll try to save him, but it won't be enough. Zizar is able to pick up another kill. Yeah, and... Uh... As we mentioned just before, getting that kill onto Callista with uh, no help, but Tarek and Zach there this time to help out their mid laner. So Lebeau, uh, the beneficiary of some nepotism here with his teammates and comes away with, I believe, both kills in that extended fight. And you can see how hard it is for Lucian to fight against these tankier members trying to deal damage, but that's Zach just taking the entire culling with no problem whatsoever. Just 
allowing this Victor to go essentially untouched after drop it, dropping the gravity well. And uh, that's only going to continue to get harder and harder as this game progresses uh, and the damage sort of falls off from the side of morning side here. Yeah, three members looking around mid lane here, possibly trying to get some pressure as soon as Rift comes up here in about 15 seconds. You do have Blaze Matrix diving in, but it will not do much. No roots are able to land. But I just want to look at these top laners right now. You do have one fully built item on top of Sheenie there, the form of the Black Cleaver. But I'm interested in Garen's build. Not only does he have a Phage and full boots, but he also has the Bramble Vest, which is great to deal with the uh, Aatrox. But honestly, I think where your pressure wants to be in another full item, or any full item for that matter. But uh, meanwhile, everything's going on. The bot lane from Morningside is able to do some solid damage. The Bew is going to get caught off guard, get a force to flash. One tower to one tower. Rift is going to go over to Davenport. Just a lot of pressure there, but a good on Morningside for trying to force something there in the mid lane. Yeah, I do like what Morningside tried to do there. I think they're actually catching LeBeau a little out of position. He knows his entire team's on Rift Herald and... I should know that he's cut off by a couple of members of Morningside, steps a little bit too far and does cost him his flash, but uh, that is all on this occasion. So uh, I guess decent in the sense that his cooldowns were available to him, but now we'll be without that flash once again for the next four minutes or so. Yeah, but next Cloud Drake is up. First one for Soul here. Going to be two drinks to either team. Lost Boy getting a little seen by Doc and Gage. There's going to back out. A lot of poke damage coming out here as you do have Davenport holding over the pit. Multiple members are diving in. They're forcing out Jasper, though, but here comes Zizar. Not scared whatsoever. Diving in, getting the triple man here in the ulti form. A lot of damage popping in as well. Labu is able to go on a killing spree and pick up Seabass there. Passive can get popped on top of Zizar there, who's going to get shut down quickly by Lost Boy. More damage is coming in left to right. Another stun. Another kill going over to Labu. More damage is going through the chasing after Tim Dune, who's going to get pulled in the ulti. It's actually able to stay alive. Is able to quickly take down Ergon. It's currently a 2v3 here. Let's go. Doc Gage is able to get the stun on top. The ulti is going to keep them alive for a bit longer. They are forced off. The jungler is still up. Labu is trying to do anything to try to delay them from taking it. And actually has the damage. Can probably take down all three. And that's going to scare off Morningside. Forcing them back away from the Drake. And it looks like Drake time will come another time. Yeah, doing a nice job here, forcing Morningside back. You can see Seabass already respawned, running back down. Trundle should just be able to hop on this one, but actually Zach going to be around as well. So Laboo may have just done enough here. They do see him on vision. Three members around, and Garen now has a full health bar. Has hit level 11 on that healing, so I do think Morningside will just be able to take this one. And I'm actually a little surprised that Laboo didn't go in to kill all three of them. I do think, as you mentioned, he did have the damage to do so actually kind of allowing garen to escape uh with his life there because of the regen on that passive able to be available for his team to go take dragon and they will set themselves up with the second drake now just two away from soul yeah and we're not even gonna forget that morningside did a pretty well job during that fight able to bring it down just to a 3v2 though with low health bars in fact they're able to round out that uh that gold difference by just around 500 gold they are down a tower, they're down three kills, but now they're up a Drake. They got a ton of shutdowns there in that matchup, and now they're probably going to be looking for Labu's head here. They definitely want that 400 gold bounty into the mix, and it will definitely make life a lot easier during team fights, especially with that victor's damage. But everyone's going to reset here. A lot of pressure going in the top lane as another duel is going to happen. Blaze Matrix is looking a bit low. Slowly but surely here, they're going to force off of each other with both about half health. The members are rotating to the top one. We may see another fight happen soon. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, things getting a little bit trickier for Shiny Rim now. It's uh, tough to deal uh, extended damage to this gear and just kind of heal it up in that passive. So, guys, to watch out for these extended trades. Really needs to take a full all in and get that ultimate out if he does want to. Burn, but uh, is at least putting some pressure here in the top lane as he can clear extremely quick, quickly with those shotgun knees. While a uh, death rush here. Yeah, multi members going in here. Looks like he was just out of position. Is going to get shut down, but multi members are around. Here comes a TP from the top side. Zizar is diving straight into the mix with the ult. He's going to get caught off guard and is quickly going to take it down. Not before Jasper is able to take down Seabass. Multi members are going in right now. The ult is going to get popped from Doc and Gage. Able to land on top of two members here. Blaze Matrix looking pretty low. Is going to get stunned. The pull is there. Jasper is able to pick up another kill. It's currently a 1 for 3 here going to the side of Davenport. 
We have pressure on this tower. Doc and Gage looking for something. Has to flash, scared of that tower and the extra damage from minions as well. But it does look like a win in Davenport's book here. Yeah, and that's what you want to see out of the Taric ultimate there. Mercenary, not used until very late in the last fight. May still have been on cooldown this time. That Callista to go in hard under the turret, put all the stacks of her spears in the gear and the Ren taking him down from about 15% of his HP there, which is a lot. Uh, even at this point in the game. Um, and that's what you want to see out of the ultimate. I do think it also saves Shini Rim's life there. So good usage of that ultimate. They do a nice job to go under the turret, take down a member of Morningside, take down the turret as well, and get out to reset for the next objective. Definitely indeed. And I would uh, like to notice here we have a little bit of downtime, though there's some focus here. Uh, thank you for the raid focus esports. Glad to have all you here. Apparently looking at an Eastern C Division match between Davenport and Morningside. Currently, looks like Davenport's holding the lead right now, but only by about 2K gold. Though Morningside is not out of it. We have seen a lot of good plays from there. As Baron is now up, that's the next objective. And it just, a lot of people rotating around, waiting and preparing. We have a lot of vision coming out here from the side of Davenport, but it doesn't look like Morningside's actually rotating to try to clear that one up. As members are looking around for that jungler, and they do have eyes on him, and they might be looking for a dive here shortly as members are starting to round out for another team fight. But Labu is caught off guard and alone has to burn the flash to get away from Lost Boy's damage. Four members are waiting around the corner, and they're going to be diving in one by one straight into this mid lane. Somebody's going to get targeted here, though we do have Zizar waiting around the corner. Multiple members do see him, and he's going to get caught off guard here. Trying to land the hop is not going to have it there. It's going to get caught off guard. A lot of damage being dealt. The passive is going to get popped here. It might stay alive. You do have Lost by popping that ulti as well. Zizar is able to get away just barely with that passive. And it looks like members are going to split off here. But Morningside may be looking for a bit more. Yeah, pretty good pick there by Morningside. Getting the Zap passive for essentially free there. It looks like they only used the uh, Culling as well as the Trungle ultimate there. So that is not a uh that's not a very high price to pay for that passive which is on quite a long cooldown so i'm not sure it will be up for the next drake which is spawning here in 30 seconds so good work there by morning so i can take advantage of zach trying to get a flank and they'll have a bit of an advantage in this upcoming team fight with that passive down definitely indeed and while we're looking out here the possibility of a soul is definitely looking over morning stars heads here need one more to be on soul point and a lot of extra cooldown would be great for them. They have some solid alties, and it looks like the... Oh, and Shinny's gonna get caught by the Q. It's gonna burn the flash, just barely getting around the pillar there from Tim Doom. Oh my. Running around. Looks like some damage on top of Tim Doom. He's just barely able to no. get out of the he is there, and it's going to land. There he goes across the map. He's gonna fall quickly, as looks like Davenport's able to swiftly turn this one around and pick up a Cloud Drake. And you can see some of the damage starting to come through here. LeBeau absolutely destroying Tim Doom there with that EQ combo. And that great snipe from Shinirem catches out the jungler, yanks him across the map for that ultimate, guaranteeing this Drake. But the damage really done there by LeBeau, uh, too much damage for the jungler. Would have been a difficult dragon take, even with that ultimate not landing from Urgot. So... CS Victor 4, 1, and 6 onto two items and boots now starting to become very scary, starting to scale to that point where there may be no coming back for Morningside. Definitely and definitely truly there. But we do have LeBeau holding off the members of Morningside from taking away that mid lane, that tower just barely hanging on there. Meanwhile, it does look like Blaze is able to take the top tower and he's going to keep the push on going here. We do have two towers gone completely away from the bot lane. A lot of added pressure for that Drake there. Though, about even now. Across the board, you do have Baron up and ready. Drake's up in about four minutes, so it's going to be a long while. So they just want to get some vision cleared out of that jungle. That was a fun little interaction we just got to see there. Seabass's uh, lantern going uh, in a nice long dash. And it was a weird interaction to see, from my opinion. We do have the pressure from... Uh, it does look like Davenport wants to get a lot of extra pressure on top of this bear. They're not looking for a fight. They're not trying to force anything because Morningside can still swiftly turn it around. You do have that Zach passive still down, though all alties are up. 
They don't have much to force, and uh, looks like we might have a fight starting up here. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. I think Davenport needs to start the Baron right now. If they see Lissandra on the wave in bot side with no teleport, they can absolutely force this. All their ultimates are up. They should be able to win a 4v5 team fight, no problem. But instead, they're actually going to back off and go mid. They might lose a full turret for this. Here they go. Yeah, looking for the fight. Jasper's able to flash and toss. Doc can gauge it to a three-man. The stun's able to go through. Labu is unstoppable, doing some solid damage. Multiple members getting pulled down. The tower is gone, but at what cost? Another member falls. Abu is going to take down the Garen as well. A quick two-for-one trade, forcing Doc and Gage Flash from Lost Boy. Lost Boy is running away here, able to get away from Abu. Abu Ooh. does not want to give up easy. He's going to be there. The damage will be there as well. A shutdown going to Abu. It's going to be a four-for-one. Now they're going for this bear. Yeah, that's, and that's exactly what I was talking about there, Mercenary. I wanted them to go in and give a lot of credit to Jasper here, making the call, pulling in, talking Gage, throwing him forward, hits a three-man with the Callista ultimate into a two-man Tarek stun, and gives some credit to Lost Boy, actually able to dodge the Tarek stun and takes down Jasper really at the beginning of the fight, but with the way that fight started, the fact that Lissandra wasn't around, and she goes into the pit here. Yeah, looking for something. Dropping the ulti there. Shinny Ram has taken a lot of damage, and it looks like he's going to just barely survive. They're actually able to take it down. Multimember is going through Seabass to get it taken down by Doc and Gage. A support v. support, though it does look like Davenport has the extra members. Caesar is going to fall swiftly, though. Looking low. Same with Tim Dune. He is going to fall as well. It's going to be a triple kill to Lebu, and it looks like they're going to go ahead and rotate back off of this Baron. And we said it before the game, Mercenary. It was going to be very hard to get to the game went on for the side of Morningside. And I don't know about you, but I saw Victor with a hundred. The end of that fight, picking himself up a triple kill. Now on to three items with the death cap completed. And I think that's a preview of what's to come in essentially every team fight from here on out. I agree. Right there, Lebu actually has a lot of good positioning tools. He's never really alone, and if he is, he feels confident. He feels strong, especially when diving into that mid lane to try to protect that tower to its last breath. Uh, Lebu is just absolutely on fire for this match. If they win this, Davenport takes this one out. Even if they lose this, I don't think we're going to see a victor again in the next round. But speaking of rounds, Dragon's up for another one. We do have about 40 seconds until that's happening. Members are moving from morning size. You do have a few members... From Davenport, able to take that Rift Herald. So they are looking around across the map, actually, towards multiple uh, objectives. Baron has the damage on the Q's. Everyone's kind of split up, and Morningside doesn't really know what to think about it. Yeah, and, and I think they could go again here. Garen's still coming down. He's finally going to be in a position to join this fight. It was briefly a little bit of a risky positioning there for Morningside with that 4v5. And they do now have their top laner around, but... Uh, Davenport definitely in pole position here for the Drake, although Casper gonna get caught here. And Casper's gonna get queued there. Seabass diving straight into the mix is gonna fall swiftly to Lebu. The ulti from Doc Engage is gonna get popped, landing on top of three members, but only one in front is Doc Engage. Shinoran is gonna take a ton of damage from that ulti. Irie's gonna fall quickly to Lebu. Here comes Caesar in the back lane. Gonna do some solid damage to Lost Boy there. The flash from Lebu. Lebu is gonna get popped. Caesar is able to pick up that kill, though it's currently a three for nil. They feel confident to return it to that Drake, and they're probably going to get a Baron for their troubles as well. Yeah, I would hope they go right over to the Baron. I actually think they should split up right now. I don't think they need all five members on this Drake. I think uh, Shiniram, yep, actually going to go up and hopefully try to start this Baron right away. They do finish that one off very quickly, but once again, you can see all the damage that LeBeau is putting out here in these team fights. Picks up a double kill in the early stages. Absolutely blows up Seabass when he goes in trying to get on top of Jasper there. And Flashes does most of the damage to Lost Boy. They do have to give a lot of credit to Caesar for his initial engage onto that Lucian. Um, this uh, victor Ooh. is just too strong at this point. Definitely, indeed. He chunked out. He chunked out Tim Dune to have health, forcing him to take the lantern out of there. The members are going to start up that Baron. You actually have Shini going all the way to the top side to take care of the waves up there. He's finally returning there. 6,000 here. Tim Dune is winning around the corner. Might try to risk his life for this Baron, though it does not look like Lebu wants that in general. Caesar is going to pop over the wall. Baron is going to shortly fall. Members are winning around. Irie's trying to go in and do something, but it's not going to stand. Blue team gets the Baron. 
and they're looking straight for the fight here. Tim Dune is caught off guard, gonna pop the pillar to keep himself alive, and it does look like everyone's gonna back <laughs> off, but Labu does not want to, <laughs> doing a... Oh, Tina, that's gonna take him down. He's absolutely legendary, this match. And that's just one for nil and getting a bear in their pocket as well. Now all they have to do is just push for that base, honestly. Yeah, 13, 1, and 8 on the victor. That Lich Bane doing work here on every one of those Q procs. It is absolutely terrifying for any member of Morningside that doesn't have MR. And, oh, wait, Mercenary, none of them do. <laughs> Speaking of MR, here comes Zizar diving straight into the mix. Able to do some solid damage. The ulti is just barely going to make it. But here comes the TP from the bot lane. Ergot's going to show up and show you some pain. Look at me, I'm rhyming. But uh, members going to get forced off here. Nobody's going to fall. And it's going to be a lot of pressure onto this mid tower, especially with Morningstar's health bar so low. I don't think they're going to be able to contest this for the damage, though. Tim Dune is going to try. Yeah, doing a decent job so far. But once again, they don't have a lot of ranged wave clear here. So really hard for them to step up to the turret. And yeah, they're going to get punished here. Yeah, there goes Gary swiftly to the members of Labu and folks. There's going to be a flash from Blaze Matrix there. There goes the first and Hib. They're feeling pretty confident. They have a wave and two cannons, so they're just going to keep it going. Davenport looking for some action, and it looks like it's going to be a do-or-die moment here for the side of Morningside. They're able to pick up one of the members. Dock Engage looking pretty low, and a lot of damage being popped down. There goes Seabass swiftly oh. as well. The ulti is going to land as well. A view for a double kill. Multiple members fall. It's not going to be an ace, but surviving. And there goes round one to Davenport. Yeah, that'll do it for game number one here. Good final Baron push there. I think Davenport, knowing how strong they were, didn't need to wait for another wave, didn't need to wait for a second or third inhibitor. Push in under the turret and a well-executed final team fight there uh, by both uh, LeBeau and Shinram in particular. LeBeau putting out the damage, Shinram landing that ult and fear combination. And, just a pretty well-played game by a lot of members uh, on the side of Davenport here and a good draft to set up that good gameplay. Playing game, and as we're looking at the uh, damage counters here, uh, not not to be much, but it almost feels like I'm watching a, a, a solo queue match from some of my challenger friends. Look at that damage from Lebu, 45K, top of the board, only followed up just barely by that Lucian at 25K as well. Solid damage from Labu. He was absolutely a monster that match. Going through and doing some solid damage. I think he only ever died once, actually. Yeah, he died only once. 16 and 1. Doing a ton of damage, so we're definitely not going to see Labu on that uh, victor during the second round. But speaking of the second round, we're going to take a short break here while we get things set up for you guys. Who is going to take the second round? Is Davenport going to make this one a quick old 2-0? Or is Morningside going to show up? and take this one to some silver scrape sounds in game three. We'll see you guys in just a couple minutes here.
And welcome back, GG Leagues fans, back to this Eastern Division C match between Davenport University and Morningside Esports. In that first round, we saw Davenport tear it down with Morningside, but in match two, I'm interested to see what Morningside has to counter with by immediately taking out that Victor. My name is Mercenary. Joining me is Victor is gone. What do you think we're going to see next? You know, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, Mercenary. We'll see kind of how the first picks go along. I, as you mentioned, I, I do think we both expected the victor to get banned after doing 45k damage in that last match. But um, <laughs> the problem can still be the same if it's a similar draft, right? Morningside really had issues getting to the victor. They didn't have any range. Uh, they had to engage with a bunch of melee champions, you know, Garen. Oh, and well, there's some range in Caitlyn, actually. <laughs> Morningside picking up that Caitlyn for their first pick. Solid enough. Let's see if Davenport's going to counter with an AC. No, they want to pick up that Zach that was well played last time there. Did a lot of engages and was definitely around the map for some early kills, especially for that Callista. Speaking of which, we might see Callista come back up. Though the Ash would be a solid pick into the Caitlyn as well. But it does look like they're going to go for that Orin in the top lane. Yeah, that one was banned away in uh, round two of Picks and Bans last game, I believe, by Morningside. So Davenport trying to pick that one up early. And I do like the look, a uh, bit of a different look here from Morningside. Now actually having that Caitlyn Morgana lane in bottom will put a lot of pressure. Uh, as we were talking about last draft, very hard for them to get on top of that victor. We did have a range advantage on them and had a damage advantage as well. So when you have a bunch of melee champions running into a victor, you're usually not a good time and would have been hard had they not had they had a lot of melee champions again you could have just picked another mage with some range someone like syndra uh potentially someone you know like uh we look at uh even like a nico could have been a problem now having this kate morgana uh, they have a clear point of pressure on the map and that Callista picked into it and now i think they should ban away this Tarek mercenary because uh Callista, really good early game champion but very short range and it can struggle a lot into a duo like Caitlyn Morgana. So I would expect to see a couple support fans here to try to make Callista's life as hard as possible. Definitely indeed. Caitlyn Morgana, definitely a tough one. And there's that Tarek as you were talking about before. We have the trap duo of Caitlyn Morgana. Should be an interesting one there. No more Tarek, so we may see another tank camp picked out here by Doc and Gage. Mordekaiser are getting away from the top lane. There goes, looks like the Zoe once again for the mid lane. No more Velkaz as well. Some even targeting across the board for top lane and uh, mid support. It looks like we're going to go straight for the first pick here. Davenport do have the counter pick on morning side, but it looks like they're picking up the set. Is this going to be a set support? That's going to be exciting. Um, They could be, although set support has definitely fallen out in recent patches here. He's had a lot of his power taken out of that early game. Uh, do we do see a similar... Uh, ban like Pantheon take it away, so may still be able to have pressure, but really hard to have kind of pressure you want on set against the Morgana once that Black Shield is up, can you know, simply nullify the E pull and kind of make set uh, fairly port uh, there, similar to say an Alistair trying to go into a Sivir. You know, once you lose that combination there from the spell shield, it's hard to get out because you can only run after that. So. Darius and Annie actually going to be the last two lock-ins here. So very different look here from the side of Morningside than they had in draft number one, Mercenary. Definitely indeed. They have a strong point uh, down in the bot lane there. And he's definitely going to round it out for mid lane with some more MR and a solid amount of damage. And the Darius picking up another general, but it looks like to try to deal with Annie, they're going to pick up the rise for Davenport. Davenport has a solid comp altogether, though that bit more interesting we probably won't see too many engages from them until around level six we're close a quick e as well so that bot lane from morningside is looking pretty deadly that caitlin morgana definitely strong i do not think that lost boy uh did poorly last time i think it was just the picks that they were up against now they took away that tark from that Callista. I think it's going to be a bit easier for them, especially with the added range of the Caitlyn in that bot lane. Yeah, I honestly think Jasper's life could be very, very miserable in this lane. I, I, I see what the set, pit, set pick is designed to do. You, you want to have 
the option to go in in the early couple of levels, try to get a kill onto this Callista like you did last game. But if you wait around or Morgana just skills E first, that I think a lot of what Set wants to do is completely taken away. Uh, I would love to see Morningside split the map here. I do think Trundle is a stronger jungler in the early game than Zack is. I think you could go for some sort of late debate here, go for some sort of strategy where you force Zack to the top side allow him and Orn to try to gank this Darius, which I don't really think they can do, and really allow your bot lane to do what they want to do. I think this is a lane, as you mentioned, I think Lost Boy played the illusion about as well as he could last game, uh, and I do think this bot lane is set up to succeed in every way, shape, or form, so long as they are not being interrupted constantly by uh, Zach as they were last game, as the bot lane was last game. So I would love to see a split map. We'll see if they try it out. But if they can't get the split, I would at least like to see a lot of attention go down to letting this bot lane play the way that they want to. Definitely as well. I agree. Morning says gonna have a lot more of a fun time there. And I wouldn't even I wouldn't give any failure to these members. They all played extremely well where they could, but it was just the matchups they were had that they have were just not that fun for them. That bot lane is going to be a fun one for Lost Boy down there and Morgana. But looking towards the top side here, the Darius pick, something we don't see very often, and it does look like Morningside's top laner, uh, Blaze, is definitely a favor of those generals of the Warring Sides with the Garen last round. So with that Darius beforehand, getting him ahead would also be a nice pick if they can't get the bot lane ahead as well. Where Darius is well known for tearing it through, and he can definitely deal with tanks, especially with the set Orn and Zach. He do a lot of damage in the form of bleeding there. Uh, but with just one, with just about a minute left here before we go down to the rift, DJ, who do you think has the upper hand just based off these drafts here? I, I actually like Morningside's draft here. I, I think the Darius is a bit of a rush because, like you mentioned, usually you want to get your Darius ahead. Um, but I do think this bot lane has such a huge advantage that you can play around that. I think Annie will do just fine in leaning this rise. I think she can try to set up a kill at level 6, and she'll always be there to try to stun Rise or Callista in the team fights, which is all you're going to want out of that Annie. So I think that's a good pick here. Uh, but I think this Darius can exist on his own. I think if uh, you play the waves right, you allow them to come a little close to your turret, and they try to die against this Orn, or at least freeze the wave and sort of exist on your own. And, and I think that this bot lane is a huge advantage. So I do like Morningside's draft, and I'm excited to see how they play this one out. Definitely as well. You heard it here first, folks, as we're diving straight into spectator delay. Who's going to take this one? Spam in the chat is going to be Morningside, bringing us to game three. Or will Davenport swiftly take this one in a 2-0? We'll see you guys in just a couple of minutes here.
And welcome back, G Fleets fans, to this Eastern Division C round two versus Morningside on the blue and Devonport on the red. I'm Mercenary with DJ. And uh, we were talking about that set earlier. And uh, I, I, I do like to look at that uh, rune there of uh, Omni Stone. <laughs> yeah, not one you see too often um, about now, Mercenary. Although, uh, again, we've been talking about set. He is a champion that can do a lot of things back two, three patches ago could be played top jungle, mid, or support so pretty much anywhere across the map. Uh, just does bring a lot of utility. And so maybe looking for uh, that additional utility there with that rune. Again, we've talked about how this Morgana can really make his life uh, pretty hard by skilling that E, taking away his ability to uh, use that pullback onto this Caitlyn. Uh, so maybe looking for other ways to provide utility to this lane so they can get through this very oppressive uh, bot lane duo. As well, I mean, he has the Obsidian Dragon set skin. That was a pretty high one in recent history that people were excited for. So I think he's pretty happy to have that one on the board, at least. As we're looking around, no one's going to do any damage right now. Just quick old five-point start, and it looks like we're just going to get right to it here with some uh, buff taking soon. Game looks like Zixar this time going to be starting on the blue buff, but both teams starting on bot side. Uh, Darius placing an early ward there, I believe, so keep an eye on that one. Uh, actually, maybe he didn't place a ward, a little surprised. And maybe just trying to set up a bush camp there. Uh, do keep an eye a little bit in the early game onto Blaze Matrix against Shiny Rim. Uh, if there is no jungle intervention, I'm excited to see what Blaze Matrix can do with this wave should have. Uh, a good, sizable advantage against this Orn. It's uh, very scary for tanks going up against Darius in the early game. So uh, could potentially be a volatile matchup, but uh, junglers may intervene at some point. Hopefully, as well, you do have rotations happening. We do have Tim Dune once again moving straight up to the top side without the full clear. He just wants to quickly have pressure for the top side for Blaze Matrix here. Okay looking for something meanwhile across the board right now Callista actually holds a bit of an advantage the set is playing pretty aggressive trying to scare away members as the black shield is not up and ready yet overall though i think it's going to be a pretty calm start we do have an early back here from shinny rem maybe just trying to catch someone off guard not going to land anything though uh but yeah pretty calm start yeah uh nothing much doing here though I do like where bot lane has the wave right now. Lost Boy getting a bit of a semi-freeze going on here. Looks like the wave is pushing a little bit of action in middle. A bow equal to it. Yeah, Tim Dune looking for something. Not going to find much, though. It's going to rotate down to the bot lane, though, to take that scuttle. Do have Zizar waiting around the corner just in case something happened, though. It looks like they could have might try to contest for this bottom scuttle. Get a bit of a charge from Shini in the top lane. It's going to get pulled by Blaze Matrix. Gonna take a lot of bleed damage though, making the matchup even. Meanwhile, looks like the charge is gonna happen. Three members are around Tim Dune. He's gonna have to back up, but there's the fourth one around the corner. Some flashes burned in the first blood going over to Jasper. Yeah, Tim Dune just caught completely no man's land there. And you can tell uh, he's in the wrong spot because four members of the enemy team showing up before a single member of his own team. So not having any priority whatsoever. And, uh, getting caught there in the river. So first blood over to the side uh, of uh, Davenport here. And it will be onto their Callista once again. So nice early kill and double buffs over this Callista. Although it will be a little bit of a different lane state. Like, here's a gank. Here comes Zizar. Going to land the hook. Not going to get the extra pull thanks to the black shield from Seabass. He's got to flash away here. But Tim Dune wants some revenge. It's going to pop the passive on top of Zizar. He's looking pretty low, but here comes the TP 
from the rides. I'll be looking for some damage here. It's not going to find much. Doesn't have enough speed boost to catch up. Four, two, three. The members are going to back off, and it doesn't look like anyone's going to die just quite yet. Caesar is going to back in the bush. Lebeau is going to go straight back to the mid lane, and everything's fine in the end for a TP burn. Yeah, pretty nicely played there uh, by uh, this bottom lane and jungler. Uh, Jas or sorry, Lost Boy, Seabass. Oh, and actually Tim Doom right back for uh, Jasper this time. Yeah, Tim Doom looking for something to land the pillar as well. The damage is going to land right on top of the surface. Able to pop the the explosion there. Able to quickly take down Tim Doom, fighting off a little bit more than he can chew. Yeah, Tim Doom, I think only uh, level, what level is he actually? Only level sitting three. at level three here. Yeah, coming back in for that gank just... Kind of getting stat checked there pretty hard by the Callista. She still did have her heal and did a ton of damage to him. He ends up getting cleaned up by Doc Engage with that set shield. Good Q landing here. Ooh, Look at the trap on Mike Death here. Ooh. Doc Engage there to force it away. Lost Boy has to burn the flash, but the quick tower shot is going to get Seabass a kill in the bot lane. A bloody bot lane so far here, and Jasper's looking for something sneaky. Oh my goodness, Jasper, this is so risky. You gain the Q, dodging another Q as well. <laughs> the combo will take it. Seabass picking up another kill in that box. Drake is getting picked up here by Davenport. Yeah, good work by Zigstar to take that Drake, knowing that Tim Doom uh, was down. It was probably needed to farm. He's been involved in a couple of uh, skirmishes here. His Blaze Matrix going in, but Shitty Arms level 6. Yeah, saw the amount of damage with the ulties there in the well. But here comes Zizar, bloodthirsty from last time. Able to pick up a lost boy there as the support had backed off. And an extra kill going over to the jungle. That's going to feel pretty good, especially uh, from the odd fights from earlier on. What a chaotic bot lane going on here, Mercenary. Uh, just ganks coming from both members here. Uh, now lost boy overstaying there to push that wave and getting caught by Zeksar. And uh, we'll see if this one settles down. Uh, one kill for the Callista, but a, about a 20 CS gold deficit before she started picking up this wave. So pretty decent from both sides. I think both AD carries might be a little bit frustrated, but also a little bit okay with how everything has turned out in that lane and should see Lost Boy continue to pressure here as uh, all summoners are down down there uh, for the ADs. Ignites only for the supports. Yeah. He's going to land on top of Doc Engage with an extra trap. Like I said, the trap duo for a reason. Jasper's trying to even it out right there, but you can't really stop that amount of damage to shield anymore. But meanwhile, Root from Aerie is going to land on top of Lebeau, Lebeau with the ulti of Tibbers. Quickly get it taken down there. It was a good attempt there, Aerie, but just not enough damage. Not just yet, and especially under tower. Couldn't really get a helpful engage from Tim Dune there. Yeah, I think a bit of a miscommunication there between the two teammates. I think uh, Air looking for that opportunity to go in with the stun, but not realizing Tim Doom was still level four coming across mid lane there. So really not a whole lot probably could have been done there. Not tanky enough really to tank up any tower shots. And Lebeau's level seven with a tier uh, and a catalyst. So uh, would have been a big risk for Tim Doom to try to follow up on that one. Probably the right call to back away, but... Uh, never fear, Tibbers will always do a lot of damage uh, to the enemy regardless, and it at least forced the bow to miss out on a few minions there, and should be up pretty soon. You're already halfway back on the cooldown there. Yeah, but junglers here, uh, those two deaths in the in the jungle and in the bot lane definitely set Tim Doom behind here. He might be even a farm, but he's down a whole level compared to Zizar here. Meanwhile, does look like. Davenport's team will probably get the first stack across the board, laying another Q, some solid damage, extra trap for some more. Q is going to take it here. Lost Boy's damage is absolutely insane. Yeah, great work from Lost Boy and from Seabass. This lane going kind of how it was predicted. Very, very hard for Callisto with such low range to step up. And, uh, you know, with that Black Shield always available from Seabass, Set knows that he can't just run in and try to use that E to pull in the bot lane duo. So has to sit back and kind of avoid the poke. And a Q lands here from Seabass goes into essentially a full uh, Caitlyn combo and uh, timing it well around the W shield. Uh, Lost Boy getting an extra kill there. The pressure continuing to mount here now, sitting about 15 CS up. As uh, Doc Engage gets back, I believe, with the summoner teleport probably. 
Yeah. It's on that Omni Stone. <laughs> on that Omni Stone. Yeah. That Omni Stone. He kind of just submitted that bot lane. But meanwhile, Tim Dune's looking around the top lane here. Not able to find much, but take some vision. It's just going to be trying to clear around. Zizar is in the bot lane as well. Does have that Rift Herald and wants to add a little bit of extra pressure here to Davenport's push. Looking to drop it? Is he going to drop it? He hasn't dropped it just yet. Meanwhile, across the board, you do have Tim Dune in the mid lane with Aerie trying to do some damage. There's the Rift Herald. As we watch top lane, some more duels are happening here. Blaze is actually looking quite low, taking a lot of damage. Here comes the ulti from Sheeny Rem. It's not going to land. Members are going to back up here. Blaze is able to slowly but surely heal it back up. Rift did some damage. The blue is taking some more. And honestly, it's just a very slow bloodbath here. But Aerie lost their chance. You have Tim Dune getting caught out again. Dropping the pillar to stay alive. The ulti as well from Lebeau, try Lebeau trying to catch off. Tim Doom, who's able to back off. And uh, three man in the mid lane. Aerie's looking quite low, though. Has to back off. Drops the bear, though. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of rotations, a lot of damage happening to this bot lane towers, but three man mid. This one oh. might be it. Tim Doom landing the ulti as well. We're getting ulted by LeBeau, and LeBeau's gonna quickly take that as well. Just. It's just mayhem. It's just honest mayhem. I'm trying to keep up with everything happening on, but uh, tower plates in the bot lane are going over to the favor here of uh, of Morningside. They have the farm. They have the gold advantage. But meanwhile, across the board, Tim Dune is just kind of dying left and right in multiple lanes. Yeah, I got to give Tim Dune a compliment for that flash away. Actually, having the awareness to see LeBeau trying to come in on that ultimate, but then trying to be just a little bit too good of a teammate, honestly. He sees air get chunked out heavily by LeBeau, goes in there to clear that big wave out of mid lane, but three members around, that set is there, uh, just runs behind him, easily uses that ultimate to bring him back to his teammates. And once again, uh, Tim Doom will go down this time for being uh, too much of a nice guy. <laughs> it's a little too much. I don't want to make it, I don't want to make it too unfair for the enemy team now, but uh... <laughs> You know, looking around here, you do have Tim actually looking for something in the bot lane. It's going to get seen immediately, forced to back off. Meanwhile, Blaze Matrix doing a ton of damage to that top tower. They are about 12 minutes too until the plates are going to fall. A lot of pressure here. You do have Zizar waiting around the corner. Not going to be able to get the jump on any opponents here. And everyone's just kind of backing up. A lot of rotations looking for this bot lane, which has just been a huge fighting place this entire match. You do have LeBeau waiting around the corner. The TP is coming in from Sheeny as well. They want some damage, oh, and unfortunately no. there, Lost Boy is a little too greedy, wow. taking some damage, forcing the flash. Five man down here. The ulti getting missed by Sheeny as well. Chaos ensues in the bot lane. Multiple members are waiting around. Tim Dude's able to get some extra health. No one is going to die just yet. As the pressure is going to back off, LeBeau looking for something. He's the flash is worth it. The ulti's worth it as well. This tower is looking quite low though. Ulti's gonna get popped here by Jasper, tossing and dock engage to engage on the enemy. Seabass is looking quite low as a damage is gonna pop through. Zizar is able to take out Lost Boy. Three members are down. Two members are also traded as well. Actually, it's a lot of trading you do have timbers here just absolutely being insane uh four for three there uh for the side of davenport that was a bloody bloody mess yeah it's absolutely chaotic mercenary but i guess you made the tp worth it everybody <laughs> I'm in under this turret i was initially gonna say i was worried for lost boy they're sticking around to try to deal damage to LeBeau on the rise as he's coming in. Gets rooted up, which allows Zizar to get on top of him, but a great flash and shield actually gets him out of the initial engage. It looks like he's going to come to nothing, which would have been absolutely fantastic for this team. Uh, but then they uh, make the decision to pile in under the turrets. Uh, just diving in is Davenport there, trying to, as you mentioned, probably make all of the expenditure worth it. Down on a back timer for blaze matrix so they were not going to lose too much if they did go in and it ends up being uh, just about worth it there with the four for three and all the minions lost the turret taken down as well they do lose the turret in top side as recompense 
uh, as Matrix finally able to take 20 CS lead here. They'll even bottling up a little bit more than it was. Uh, we'll see kind of long term who that is more worth it for. Shaney getting caught by the double root combo here, taking a ton of damage in the mix. Ulti's gonna get dropped, but it will not be enough to take him down, but enough to force him off. Rift is gonna be up here just about now, and members are rotating around to do something. Tim Dune staying around for a ward is gonna get caught off guard by Jasper, taking a ton of damage. LeBeau is waiting around the corner, has to blow the blast plant to get away. Meanwhile, the bot lane is able to take out that tower down there, but it does not look like they're able to stop this Rift Child being taken by Davenport. Rotations are necessary, but it does not look like Lost Boy or Seabass are going to come up. Instead, they're going to back off, spend their cash here as Tim Dune looks for something, anything, to save this jungle. Yeah, I think... I actually think that uh, Morningside happy to give away this Rift Herald here. Won't be the end of the game. They'll probably lose their mid turret here. What they are more concerned with is the fact that Davenport already has two drakes here. The third one coming up in just a minute here. It's a mountain soul and a mountain rift in this game. I think that is more the concern. And Lost Boy about to go on to two items here. I think they're going to want to try to funnel farm onto him, get him onto that two item spike before this third drake comes up. They can do that. I think they can take a stand there. And I think that is a fight that could go either way. Uh, if Blaze Matrix also sticks around now, you can see Lost Boy already doing a ton of damage. Ooh, here comes Sheeny from the bot lane, though, and getting a triple man knock up there. There goes Tim Dune. Ulti's not going to land much, but meanwhile, solid damage across the board. That's going to be Sheeny in the mix. But meanwhile, does look like the Andy's going to take it down. It's currently two for two across the board. Caesar has to pop the ulti to try to do something to save Lost this mess from happening here. No ulti from Blaze Mit Mit Matrix. Oh, my goodness. But he's able to get two shutdowns in recompense for that one drake is up two for four they're able to rotate around and go ahead and try to take this drake yeah and it looks like morningside they're gonna need to wait for that dragon to come up davenport hands it to them on a silver platter engaging in mid lane they take down tim doom who has been behind in this game for a long time they take him down very quickly but nobody gets on to lost boy and even without two items this caitlin already doing a lot of damage with the storm razor goes completely untouched in that fight dishes out the dps and blaze matrix able to go in there clean up a couple of the weaker targets uh, near and around the turret so big win here for morningside they take down four they take this drake to stop the soul stacking and that's going to give this caitlin even more time to continue to build up get more items give blaze matrix some time to try to continue to build this lead it's now 2 0 oh, 1 with that black cleaver so very very good here for morningside and they have to be feeling good about the way that this game is looking for them now oh definitely they're up on gold and now the kills might be even the towers might be as well but some small some strong shutdowns going straight to blaze matrix were able to uh, quickly turn the tides of this uh matchup and Looking across the board here, Tim Dune might be one of the weaker members. He's still able to help with Pillar and a lot of extra damage as that. But uh, Blaze Matrix, definitely strong. Had some time to grow in the top lane, not getting shut down. And they're looking pretty strong here. His members are uh, slowly oh, rotating, looking for kills right now. I can't believe he hasn't gone all in there, Mercenary. They see everyone on the map. At that moment, he has double buffs in top lane. That, that's, you can kill the <laughs> Orn there. I think Blaze Matrix being too respectful to Shiram. He can absolutely bullet him right now. Yeah, and that might be what he's looking for here. The there flash is going to get quickly burned there. The ulti from Shiram is going to stand for something. But you see that wolf sigil over the head has to back off. This Blaze Matrix is absolutely terrifying in that top lane right now. But uh, looking across the board here, you, I'm actually not looking across the board. Looking oh, at Tim Dune yeah. getting caught off guard by three members. Getting that ulti dropped on him by Tim and by Doc and Gage. You do have Aerie trying to do something with Tibbers, but it's gonna swiftly take you down by Jasper. Two for nil for the side of Davenport. Oh, and that's a good play here from Davenport to stem some of the bleeding that's been happening the last couple minutes. Zixar with the second Rift Herald now gonna take down this bot here. And uh, again, I think being a little too good of teammates here, Aero sticking around there trying to throw in the Tibber stun uh, to maybe help Tim Doom get out. He needs to leave him for dead there because once he dies, the wave can't be cleared. And wow, LeBeau going in deep here for Lost Boy. Yeah, Lost Boy caught off all alone as the other members were around. AZ kill picked up here for LeBeau. 
and a lot of extra pressure going straight onto this tower. Though you do have members of Morningside trying to rotate around, trying to stack for something. Next objective up is going to be Baron up in about 30 seconds here. And it currently looks like Davenport pulled the objective goal over their heads. They have a lot of added pressure. They're going to back off and probably try to set up for that. Meanwhile, it does look like Morningside is still trying to pick up the pieces after just a poor fight in bot lane and just that engage from Rift. Yeah, people are going to be setting up here. I think it's a little too early for anyone to be considering Baron. Uh, of course, the side of Davenport does have a Callista with them, but uh, only on uh, one and a half items here. really don't think they'll be looking for that one. I think if you're Davenport, you really want to take advantage of your strong member, and that is LeBeau once again here, sitting 4-1-5 and five on this rise now. He is up individually almost three, yeah, just a little bit more than 3,000 gold on this Annie. I think he should go out into a side lane here. His teleport's up. If they can stick him in bot lane, he can be an absolute threat. I think they would have to send Blaze Matrix to try to answer him. And I think he can kite Blaze Matrix out here. So I think that should be the play for Davenport here as this Baron comes up and try to use that pressure uh, around Baron in like one or two minutes when they feel strong enough to try to take that objective down. But I think LeBeau is strong enough at this point to potentially carry this game. Uh, we kind of talked about it on the analyst desk in the break between the game that if we did see a win condition for the side of Davenport in this draft, it was certainly the rise out on his lonesome in a split push is really hard for any individual member uh, in the composition of Morningside here to answer that one. And they had set up a little bit of a trap here around the Baron. Yeah, Death Push is waiting. There goes these are diving straight into the back line. Multiple knockups on top of Blaze Matrix, who's not able to get much in the way of stacks. And in fact, is going to have to flash away to try to survive. It's going to be able to go in a round mix. A lot of damage coming out. Aries actually able to take down Zeus there in the end. Quick trade from the bow is able to take it down. Two for two right now. Mix around, but Doc and Gage is going to make it a three for two. There goes the ulti from from a Lebeau in the back line trying to do something. Multiple members are flying left and right, but the quick show up of Lebeau is going to quickly turn this one for a just a quick ace there. Aries on the run. Lebeau was waiting for him, though. Quick old take. That's a solid ace. One over to Davenport. Yeah, it's a great fight from Davenport, but a cardinal sin committed from the side of Morningside. They forgot to protect the AD carry. I think uh, Seabass seeing an opportunity to go in and ignite a dying member, and Lebeau sneaks in from the flank right on top of Lost Boy, bursts him out of the fight. Lost Boy really not able to get a lot done there. Uh, zoned away initially by Docking Gage's W and then taken down by the Rise, and with that Caitlyn out of the fight with all of the damage fight for the side of Morningside, they really had no hope, couldn't run Cap Jasper down, and LeBeau just able to clean it up on the backside. This Rise now 7-1-6, and six, sitting on 10,000 individual gold. He's 4,000 gold ahead of his mid lane counterpart here, and I can uh, it's getting a little scary here. This Rise could easily run away with this game on his own as Teleport coming back in the mid lane from Orn here. LeBeau actually getting caught off guard here by Blaze Matrix. Oh. do some damage, but meanwhile, he's able to swiftly take out the support of Seabass there. Oh, lost Boy left too. all alone. Lost, lost lad getting quickly taken out for a double kill here from LeBeau. Five members versus three. Doesn't look too good. Doc and Gage able to get the ulti off along with the shield. Just maybe, but the bleed will take it. Blaze Matrix able to get his first stack but it's too low to keep it going. A blow is waiting for something, not getting much. It's a quick hold. Uh, it's a quick hold two for one there. A trade worth winning there for Davenport. Yeah, it's a really good play again from Davenport, sending two teleports in there, seeing a little bit of overextension in mid lane and punishing that one. And now Zach's already on the Baron. They're just going to run up there. Caitlin's still down for two seconds here. I think they're comfortable taking another team fight, although they do not have the Orn ultimate. Uh, Jasper's ult is still up here, but uh, they are stacking. Uh, Callista Spears is already going to be hard for anyone to take this objective from them. We'll see if there's a fight on the end of it. Yeah. Don't look like anyone's able to take it down. The ulti there from oh, LeBeau no. is able to take them away from the mess. No fight's going to happen just yet, but a lot of question mark pings there, keeping them safe and alive. They left right shitty behind. <laughs> I didn't even know that. They left Shinny behind. behind. He, you know, he went out of the Rizal. He had to walk his way all the way around the Baron pit. He's still alive. 
He's still good and safe. He, I bet he just feels a little bit betrayed by his team. Like, he would leave me behind? Really? He's able to stay alive, though. They all five have Baron buff, and then the push is coming through. They're on soul point. They have Baron buff. What's left to do is just push. And if you can't do it in three minutes, then you can definitely take that soul and try again. Currently, you do have members of Morningside running away. You do actually have Aerie trying to do something in the form of split pushing on the side lane, but honestly, that's not what you need right now. Right now, what you need is some defense in the mid lane. Yeah, Annie has some split push. Never going to be a huge threat. I, I, oh, here we go. Engaging. All these going to get dropped. Z's already able to come around the corner. Blaze Matrix is going to get caught off guard here. Going to take a ton of damage. Seabass is left unguarded. LeBeau is godlike getting an extra kill. Doc Engage is going to take out his support rival. It's a 3v5. You have Aerie coming around the corner, but the Zack is going to get quickly taken down here. You do have Lost Boy actually doing some work right now, getting a double kill, but a quick trade as well. It's currently it's currently two to one right now. You do have the form of Tibbers trying to go through. Lost Boy's on the run from Jasper. Jasper popping the heel, landing the Q. That's once again the bot lane and the mid lane taking down this inhib. And just, it was a well-played try there from the side of, uh, from Morningstar. You actually kept Lost Boy alive this time, but the damage is just too much from LeBeau. Yeah, a little bit too much damage at this point in the game, and not, they should be able to stay alive here. The members are respawning, but a little bit too much in the fight. Good kiting, but again, Davenport keeps seeing these opportunities and keep taking them. We had mentioned in game one when they saw Air Scott on Lissandra in bot lane alone. They engaged in mid lane. Jasper flashing in to use that Callista ultimate and this time around, seeing the opportunity once again with that Annie in bot side. Uh, they engage once again, and they find success this time, not as quickly getting on top of Lost Boy, but they win out in the extended fight because Annie is late to the party. And uh, at this point, LeBeau, 11, 1, and 8, so strong, has the upgraded death cap as well from the Orn, and it's just going to get harder and harder to take him down. They need to give Lost Boy the space and time to get strong here. He's almost on three items, but I just don't think they're going to have it as this uh, Soul Drake is coming up in 30 seconds. Definitely, yeah, unfortunately, while Lost Boy is able to do some solid damage, it's nothing to contain the power that is LeBeau, who is 11 and 1, once again, only dying once. He's died twice in the series alone. That's going to be forcing back other members. Tim Doom trying to do something, but he's 0 and 8. He doesn't stand a chance. Popping the pillar, he's going to lose most of his health. He's going to be forced to back. That pretty much guarantees Davenport to have this Drake all to themselves. You know, members of Morning Center trying to bring back things together and honestly uh, unless they can steal this drake i don't think there's going to be much to stop uh davenport from uh pushing down their base almost instantly yeah this is a tough one they just saw tim doom get chunked down as you mentioned 08 and 11 on the trundle this time around just so weak only on one completed item very hard for him to get in there he's down a level as well on zixar so they don't go for this, but this makes it so hard for them to win a team fight. Kaylin already struggling to get through some of these tankier members. Doesn't have any armor penetration yet, and now has an extra shield to get through on every member. Here comes the engage from Orn, but not going to connect with anyone. Yeah, it's going to stay alive thanks to the black from Seabass, who's able to land some Qs and do some solid damage, but it's not really enough. She need taking a ton of damage from members right now. That's just due to the combo, which stays pretty solid. Quick flash to get burned as well. Does not want to get chunked out here. Members are going to turn around and back off. You do have Jasper and Zizar looking in the top lane right now. Trying to do something as the members of Morningside are just trying to desperately force them back. Try to get an extra team fight kill. But honestly, one more team fight might be their last. As the Q is going to land, they're going to be looking for an engage here. Zizar is diving in on the back line. A lot of damage there. Seabass trying to do something with an ulti, but not finding much. Aerie has to back off. The tower is gone. Members are down. But uh, Blaze Matrix looking for an ulti, not finding anything. Has the procs on multiple people. It's going to get quickly shut down by Jasper. Members are falling left and right. Another one is down. It's a quickly three for one trade, but it's not going to stand much. Zizar is going to get TP'd in. You have, unfortunately, you have Tim doing the last one alive, left alone by his teammates. They're all going to fall. It's going to be a quick old trade, but you do have three members down for the side of Davenport. But will yeah, it be enough? Yeah, wave here in mid lane, Mercenary. I think this will do it. LeBeau should have the wave clearing damage on the turrets to clean this one up. 
until 13 seconds or eight seconds on the nearest respawn timer. I think they should just be able to clean this one up and take the series here. Yeah, one tower down, two towers down. You do have Aerie up, is going to try to do something here, oh but it's going to get Lord. destroyed by LeBeau, and that's going to show the power of this match. A quick 2-0 there for the side of Davenport. GG to you. Whew. That we was... <laughs> yeah, we talked about it in between in the caster break mercenary. If there was going to be a carry on the side if there was going to be a win condition on the side of davenport with this draft it needed to be the rise and boy was it ever once again lebeau 34k damage not quite the 45 we saw from the victor but i believe this is a quicker game and once again absolutely dominating the damage charts in these two matches playing dude he's at 34k once again top of the board and again followed by lost boy who is at 20k right now who, who once again did an amazing job but unfortunately the stars did not align for this match up to work in the end if we were in the finals right now lebeau would get mvp all the way but unfortunately you guys are gonna have to wait a couple more weeks for that one but honestly across the board gg to both teams but if anyone's watching who's gonna take on davenport you better watch out for that mid lane there but with that with that quick old 2-0 series taken by davenport that is going to do it for tonight and for this week. Thank you all for tuning in to the matchup in the Eastern Division C. Thank you to our sponsors, HyperX and Sector6 for letting us bring these wonderful matches to you guys, allowing us to cast and you guys seeing the absolute mayhem that is GG Weeks. If you want to know what's going to be happening next week or what's going to be happening in the future, make sure you check out any of our social media in the tags below or you make sure you go to at GG Leagues at any of your social media pages to find us there. Also, if you want to be part of a team in this upcoming year or you want to try to set one up in your area, make sure you go to ggleagues.com. Talk to any of our members here on our Discord and we'd be happy to set up a team with you guys as well. And I would love to see you and your sick tricks on the rift so I can scream and cast your name when you get the next pen to kill. Once again, GG to both teams. GG to Hyperx and Sector 6. GG to you guys. Stay safe out there. Have a good night, and we will see you guys next week.